morning and we have made it today I'm pleased to report good morning to you it is Wednesday the 5th of January I believe it is indeed just after 10 o'clock in the morning thank you so much for joining me today um, I do apologize for not being live yesterday I should have been live at seven in the evening and my daughter had a hospital appointment early in the morning so I thought it was a reasonable chance that we'd be back for seven but no we were um, there from well we left here at half past eight in the morning and we got back um, eight o'clock in the evening so it was a very long day I have to say and um, hopefully it will prove fruitful she was going in for some tests um, so they can work out um, the pain issues that she's been having recently and um, yes we just got referred from one place to another so we were hanging on in there to see if we could get some progress so it was worth it it was a very long day as I say but um, so it did mean that my evening plan um, was completely scuppered I could have gone live to be honest when I got back but we were just so tired we hadn't eaten apart from a few well I'd eaten a few bits and pieces from um, each of the cafes in uh, in the hospital or hospitals we went to two in the end so um, yes I wasn't really in a fit state to do any any crafting or make any sense whatsoever so here we are back again and we're it's going to be the last day today i think for this amazing silhouettes stamp set and i've been using this basically over the last of the week and um, for various different cards and i've been talking about doing some heat embossing so i prepared some pieces to do some I um, wanted to do some white heat embossing. Oh, thank you. Hi, Kay. And thank you, Kerry. That's very sweet of you. Um, so I'm going to do some white heat embossing. And this is Evening Evergreen card. Um, so I'm going to do that because I've been meaning to do that. So today is the opportunity to get that done. Let me just quickly show you some of the other cards. We did this at Coffee and Card on Monday as well. Um, and it'll be a new stamp set for coffee and card on Friday of this week and of course in the meantime our brand new catalogue has gone live together with our celebration promotion so I want to schedule in going through the catalogue and I'm not sure whether to do that this evening um, might be better for more people although the lighting's not as good but I think I may well do it this evening so I'll post for that and then tomorrow I um, want to run through the papers in the paper share give you a good look at those hi Jeanette so um, just want to flip through these that I've already made and these um, I think all of these or most of these you can see from my Facebook and YouTube videos so I'll just literally flip through them really quickly so there's three images in the stamp set um, there's the trees the butterflies and the foliage so we have those, have to remember to hold it flat to the camera, not at my angle. <laughs> there we go, that one and this one. And for the edging of this, I use the edge of the stamp just to come in and that worked particularly well. I did the same here on the butterfly one. Okay right so put those to one side so my plan is to use um, evening evergreen and this tree stamp here I've already pre-cut two pieces of evening evergreen so I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to use I do rather like a narrow um, a narrower piece but I've also got this smaller one so this is cut with the stitched rectangles and it's got a larger rectangle to go behind it 
this one was cut with Think of the name ornate layers. So, one of the dies from the ornate layers, and it um, cuts out these tiny little dots all the way around. And the reason I chose this is because I thought it was a really good size for this stamp here. So, what I'm going to do is stamp it in Versamark and then use white embossing powder and heat it. And then for the base layer. I've taken another piece of the Evening Evergreen and I've run it through the Tasteful Textile embossing folder. Oh, that's okay, Jeanette, you didn't really miss much. <laughs> and me wittering about why I wasn't here yesterday. Um, and that's going to go onto our white card base. So I'll either put this onto another piece of white. Um, or I'll use this. I think what I might do is do both of these pieces and then decide which way to um, to take it. The other option with this one is to actually um, die cut it a little bit further down so it is smaller and then put a white layer behind it. So we'll see. Let's give this a go. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Stamparatus so that I can make sure that it's nicely inked ready for the embossing powder so the first thing i'm going to do with each of these is use my embossing buddy to run over it just to make sure because it's really going to show any um spare pieces embossing powder if they get um onto the card and then melted so just adding this you can use a a tumble dryer sheet you can also use um, a sort of talcum powder anything really to stop the static building up hello Brenda you obviously collected your catalogue okay the other day I meant to check that it was you that picked it up and not just some random stranger <laughs> Okay, so it's attaching to everything today. Okay, so this is the stamp we're going to use, and I just want to make sure that it's nice and clean. Although with the Versa mark, it's not as critical because we're going to cover it in white embossing powder anyway. But let's just make sure. So I hope everybody is well. It's beautifully bright this morning. About time we've had quite a few dull days, or they start with with uh, promise and then they go downhill rapidly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one first and I'm going to pop the magnets on. Let's see. I think I can put them across the bottom like so. Across the top like so. Yeah, that will work. So let's position our stamp on here. It's going to be quite close to that border, but I think, I think we'll be okay. And I'm sorry if that's reflecting a little bit for you. It's not too bad. That's the good thing about in the daylight. It's not quite as bad. Let's turn that on slightly. Away. There we go. <laughs> it was you that picked up the catalogue. Jolly good, Brenda. I wonder what whether A you've had a chance to look at it or B if you worked out what your favourite might be yet. Okay, so I'm going to use Versamark ink. So 
a bit damp where the stamp was but I think we'll be okay so I'm going to ink this up and obviously with the Versamark which is a clear ink perfect for embossing but you can also use it for watermarks tone on tone especially on on dark card so let's do I'm going to do two lots just to make sure it's nicely coated otherwise uh, the white will be too patchy now this isn't a solid edge so we'll see it's just one of these things I've had in my mind oh Brenda's still trying to work out her favorites bless you so I'm expecting a delivery this morning usually um, the UPS man comes when I'm live and that includes the project um, supplies for our class for January so I'll be busy prepping designs for that this afternoon all being well okay so there we go I think that will have worked at that detail I'm just want to add a little bit in that middle I do have a habit of not quite inking the middle up so that's one of the good things about our stamparatus okay so let's lift that off and be careful not to handle where the verse mark is hopefully you can just about see that i think i've got a avalanche about to happen here okay, let's find the spoon mud <laughs> dear, dear. right so just going to hop this in and add the embossing powder whilst it's over the tub like so there we go so just going to turn it over oops flick it and I can see a tiny little bit here. Oh, this is a bit of a large, bit of a large brush to use, but let's just use that top end. There we go. And oh, there's a little bit here in this gap. There we go. so I think that's going to be okay so I have a heat gun here I'm trying to keep it away from the microphone just going to let the heat gun warm up there's no good putting it onto your card until it's warm So we're going to start at one end. And it'll be quite obvious, as you can see, as it's melting. way down to the bottom almost just sort of pushing it along so it's heated just do a little bit from the back there we go that's quite um it really does stand out doesn't it so i'm going to angle that see that i've got it all 
heated. I'm just going to do that a little bit on the right hand side just in case. I think it's okay. It's just the design of the stamp in that it's slightly lighter here and in here where it's broken up so I wanted to make sure that that was okay so there we go that came out well I was really pleased with that and I wanted the look almost of a silhouette obviously <laughs> of that tree almost like it's frosty or um, icy or snowy something like that there's one tiny little piece there there we go so let us see I am going to do the other one and then I'll go to the side but my um, feeling is that I need obviously need something behind this the alternate is to put it onto a piece of white um, and then have my evening evergreen card underneath but I didn't want it all too dark. Okay, so one of the options I've got is to pop it back through the die cutting machine, repositioning this piece here, and you could do it either way, you could do it from the top or the bottom, but if you do it that way, so that I end up with a, a smaller piece because obviously that takes up nearly the whole of the card um, and it would also allow me then to have this across the bottom hi Catherine so I think I'm going to try that and just run this through the machine like so if I just turn it over so that this bottom edge here and it, what's nice about this with the holes is it does sort of seat itself back in really nicely um, to cut this off to make the whole thing smaller. So I think I'm going to do that. Let me just bring the die cutting machine up. You're not going to see much of this, I'm afraid. So I'm just going to pop it through. And then I can put either a white layer or possibly... Um, crumb cake or something behind it so I've got my base layer I hope you're well Catherine and the family are well okay so what I'm going to do is reposition this I think I'm going to grab some tape Oh, there it is. Just some repositionable magic tape so it doesn't stick to anything. There we go. Okay, so what I want to do is I want this a little way up, and also it allows me to have that bottom cut off. Now I have got lots of bits stuck in here, but I think it'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to think I'm going to take it to there. As I say, it's sort of sitting in there nicely. you can't really see this piece I just lift it out there we go hopefully you'll see that so so I put it across here so that I chop the bottom off make this whole thing slightly smaller and it also means my tree isn't floating quite as much My plate has, plate has gone flying. Right, let's just pop this through. 
so I say this was very much a, an idea in my head I'm sure I must have seen another demonstrator do something else with embossing I think it was gold embossing um, but I fancy the, the white so let's see Go. Oh, yes. I didn't quite get that straight up here. Look. Cut it off. Okay, so I'm going to, I will redo that, but it will allow me to see whether that's going to work. So I concentrated on getting it straight at the bottom, but not further up. Okay, let's have a look and see. So I'm thinking a white layer behind that. Find the right size piece. Or a piece of crumb cake. If, mm. So there's the crumb cake behind. And here's the white. You can see where I cut that little bit off now. I think I'm favouring the crumb cake actually just a little bit uh, more subtle than the white so I think I'm going to go with that a white layer is best says Brenda so let me bring this up so that's on evergreen onto crumb cake like so and then white for the card or onto white. What do you think? Depends on when you want to go more neutral. Yeah, I think I like the crumb cake. It's just, and I could take it to um, a crumb cake base, but I think I want to keep that um, level of white in there. And then I'm going to have a little sentiment, which I might heat emboss as well. So, and I could put the whole thing on crumb cake, but then that doesn't make any sense if I've got white. So I do need that white bringing back in and a few white um, bits of bling if I need it. So... Those would be my layers, that one, that one, and that one. So I need to redo this piece as I majorly <laughs> messed it up. Okay, I do have this other piece here as well. So I will do something with that. So let me cut this again. So what I'm going to do this time is I going to um, cut this first and make it smaller so that I know that that's working. So let me grab another piece of evening evergreen and just trim that down. So I'm going to cut this to 14.8. Five to start with, that gives me another card base, and then I just want the width of this roughly it's about six and a half. So I'll cut that at seven. You don't want to cut it so tight that you're fighting to keep it in place. Okay, so this was the one that I used, so I'm going to cut this first. And then I'm going to move it and and recut it. So let's do that. 
so just bringing my boss machine back up normally I have it on a um, stool next to me a little table but that now has my printer on it so I didn't really want to move my printer all the way around the houses today so bear with me while you're just seeing the top edge of that right and I really would like the tape so sorry you've got to watch this again okay thank you Brenda hi Jill crumb cake crumb cake excellent so right just pop that through how's the packing going Jill I presume you haven't as yet moved out I know you said it was January sometime so I'm angling this I know you can't see this I'm angling this so it's not going through flat a bit kinder to your um, machine that way there we go And then I know roughly that's how much I want to take off the bottom again. So if I put that as a guideline here, I'm going to put this back on. Sure how much of that you can oh you can see some of it good okay so I want this to go back in place so what happened last time was I had it fairly flat but obviously it was coming in at an angle on the side and it took the edge off so apologies you can't really see what I'm doing here these little bits everywhere now you can see <laughs> right let's put another bit of tape on it doesn't help that I've got um, rather bowed plates they do need straightening right hopefully that will do the job So I just replaced it back in, positioned it slightly further up. Let's see if that's done it. It has. Perfect. Right, sorry. Take this out of the way. So I've taken that little bit off the edge so we've got a smaller rectangle there we go and that's better okay still very slightly off but it's still got most of the pattern that's all that matters okay so let's redo that let's get rid of all these tiny little bits that are now floating around on my desk my tape that's another one okay stamparatus back okay so 
I'm going to take this off because then I can position it where I want rather than worrying about the positioning of this piece here. So I'm going to pop that piece on with a magnet on the top, a magnet just along the edge because obviously this bottom piece is going to come off the bottom here now. I think that will do and then I'm going to ink up with Versamark so anybody who didn't catch the earlier little bit I'm going to ink this up with Versamark and just stamp it twice so that I've got a good coverage of ink oh and I need to do this first <laughs> now I've handled this quite a bit so we will see hopefully not too many little bits and if there are I'll just claim they're part of the design hello Michelle thank you <laughs> thanks Kerry <laughs> I've just spotted your comment now how funny is that lovely to have you join us Michelle and Laura and Tracy and Scylla it all happens when I'm not looking at the screen, doesn't it? So I'm just going to ink up this piece again. So I'm going to ink it up with Versamark and stamp it. And then I'm going to ink it up again and stamp it. Thank you for the reminder, Kerry. So this is what we're recreating, is this piece here. So I do want to do it twice to make sure it's nicely coated. And because it's a um, quite a distinctive stamp, I want to make sure that I've covered the elements that I need because I'm heat embossing. But now we, we're working on a smaller piece. So two lots of Versamark. If I wasn't so worried about having a good coating, you could just stamp this straight on without using the Stamparatus if you wanted to. Okay, so just moving those out of the way. Being careful not to put your fingers on the stamped element of the image. Bring in our white embossing powder, which has now got a few green dots in, I notice. I hope you're well, Laura. I hope you have a better, a better year ahead than last year. And hi to you, Michelle, as I said. Lovely to have you join us. Okay. So just flicking this off from the back, just being careful not to put my fingers on any of the embossing powder. And I don't think I have much in the way of any stray pieces of powder. So that's good, despite handling that bit more than I intended to. So, I'm going to bring in the heat tool. Let that heat up before it gets to the card. Okay, and then I'm just going to work from one side to the other. Don't need to be waving the heat tool all over the place. Just want concentrated heat. Just going to turn that round. So I don't burn my fingers. away so let's bring in our layers okay so I 
original plan is a white card with evening evergreen which I popped through an embossing folder like so tasteful textile and then we've got our panel which I'm going to mount to a piece of crumb cake and pop that on there now the only question I've got is whether I want actually crumb cake on the base so let's just have a look in case That gives us a better look. See what you think. Let me know. Personally, I think it's slightly too dull. I want to pick out that white, and having the white base layer does that. So stick with the original plan. Okay. So what I'm going to do is cut out this piece to fit my panel here and obviously that's just an odd size as I've, as I've trimmed it down. So I'm just going to measure this and then add half a centimetre. So this is about 6.1 by 11.7. Oh good, I'm glad you like the white. Um, so 6.1, so let's make that 6.6. I can't remember what I said, was it 11.7? 11 11 so 12.2, let's give it a go. And then my sentiment, I think I'm going to pop onto either a piece of crumb cake or evening evergreen and have it embossed. So let's have a look and see if that, how well that fits. So I'm happy with that. That's going to go onto here. And then maybe either crumb cake or, Yes, it needs to be crumb cake, otherwise it's not going to stand out from there. So let's pop these layers on together. So adhesive of your choice, either wet glue or seal. My seal there was just uh, running out. And I am going to put this one flat. So you want a scribble of glue, not too close to the edges. So you don't want it seeping out, especially with the holes. And the reason why I'm going to put this flat, this layer, and not on dimensionals, is because it's got heat embossing, it's slightly uneven. And I want it to sit really nice and flat. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that over. Press it down. There we go. So this layer I'm going to raise up and I might actually add some baker's twine. It sort of calls for baker's twine, doesn't it? And then a sentiment, which I might, um, will probably cut down. So let's see what sentiment we can use. So this set we're using is Amazing, amazing Silhouettes from the new January to June catalogue. And this is a celebration stamp set that you can get free when you place an order of £90 here in the UK. I don't want anything too big. This happy birthday was lovely. They used this yesterday, not yesterday, Monday, in um, Coffee and Card. I think it would work really nicely as a sympathy card. So I'm quite tempted to use that. Images are slightly bigger. Let's have a look. And sadly, we always need sympathy cards. And it's one of those, when you need one, they're the hardest things to make. They really are. I'm hoping this little off cut here will work. Which it will. So I think I'm going to make that a sympathy card. 
just because of its muted tones could make it uh, make a nice man's birthday card as well wouldn't it so but it's quite chunky it's the only thing hmm. hello Lynn thank you for joining us um what else could I use it's only because at the height of that is quite big against the tree that's all I'm that's all I'm thinking um so there's a nice little thanks there but whether that is too small thinking of you that would work let's try that one I need to put these on their bases so I could find it now thinking of you let's pop that there <laughs> lose that stamp in the meantime you can just see that can't you yes I feel that's better sizing based on the fact we've got a narrow tree here so I don't want anything too chunky so I could stamp that either in white on crumb cake well with Versamark or I could stamp it in evening evergreen so I'm going to try that and see if it's dark enough so I've got thinking of you so I'm going to stamp it and then cut it down So, thinking of you, now this is the first time I've used this stamp, so I'm just going to stamp it onto an off cut of paper, which obviously you can use, so I'll keep that in the pack anyway, um, just to make sure that it's stamping nicely. And as you know, I do recommend when you get a set of stamps is to ink them all up and try them out. It gives you a better feel for what they're like when they're actually stamped and also then if there's any any problems with them you've got you know easy comeback so I'm just going to I think am I going to risk cutting this right like that I could do it on the trimmer but I'm thinking get away with a single a single cut like that maybe that's no good putting up that it's not even straight I think I've got away with that okay just going to trim those edges slightly and I'm just going to build uh, bring in some baker's twine I think this would be nice on a wood grain background as well, wouldn't it? Let me bring that up so you can see it. There we go. Hopefully that's a little bit better for you to see. Okay, so it's a white card base, evening evergreen, crumb cake, evening evergreen, crumb cake, and then evening evergreen ink for that stamp there. And then let's just have a look with Baker's Twine. So I've got, funny enough, I've got Evening Evergreen, which is not really going to be seen. Thank you, Kerry. I've got White. And I'm hoping in here, we should have some traditional crumb cake Baker's Twine, which, oh, I have right at the bottom. got itself completely attached there we go so my gut feel was for crumb cake so that we've got our three elements of crumb cake so if if you're looking at a card and you think it's missing something or it's not quite working 
um, try and see if you've got an odd number of something. So this three levels of crumb cake, one, two, three, would work. And I've also got three levels of white, if I use the white. So you see how that balances it out. And I've already got three lots of evening evergreen, one, two, three. So what do we think? Crumb cake or white? Can't, can't quite decide. Definitely not the evening evergreen because you're just not going to see it. Let's tuck that one away. Oh, twisting white and crumb cake together. Jill, you're a genius. Yes, I like that. So we could do a nice bow with them both, couldn't we? I could have all three and I could plait them. However, <laughs> we might be here all night. Yeah, I like that idea. Well done, Jill. So Jill suggested using both. So let's see. What sort of bow to do. I don't want it to overtake the whole card, so I want it fairly small. see what we think so I will do a run through of the catalogue and I will also do a run through of the papers in my paper shares because they are open now for ordering and if you haven't received a catalogue from me yet then um, just comment or message for me because I have some that are that have already gone out some that are in the system so if you want to make sure that you're on my list, if you've, if you've ordered with me or attended a class, you will get one automatically anyway. Yeah, well done, Jill. Just going to trim that off. I might make it even smaller in a minute, as I say. I don't want it to overpower the whole thing. Right, let's layer this up. So I'm going to pop this layer onto my white. Just using some wet glue, which is nearly at the end. So, as you, as you know, I say a scribble of glue. There should be no height to it and not right on the edge. And then you can just slide it into place onto your card. Gives you plenty of time then without any glue oozing out everywhere. This piece I'm going to pop up with dimensionals. So let's grab those. So I'm hoping this nice bright start to the morning actually carries on today because I've got lots to do to make up for time yesterday. As I say, all being well, my UPS man will be here with my supplies for our January class which I'm very excited about and whilst I was sat in the car park yesterday <laughs> I did um, I did do some planning it was very cold though in the car park and I took my uh, I took a blanket with me I'm sure the people walking past thought I was absolutely bonkers okay so I'm gonna pop this over to the left but fairly central. And then this is going to pop in there. And I'm just going to add that, I think, in that corner. So I'm going to put this flat and with a dimensional on this right hand side. So it will it sits flat with the other piece. Otherwise, it would be slightly wonky. 
little bit of glue on there like so Voila. and I'm going to have that just in there so I've got glue on the left and a dimensional on the right like that lift it up there we go and then I'm just going to pop this just on that corner so I'm going to make it very slightly smaller because I don't want it to cover up too much of that sentiment do it like that that would work okay I'm going to grab a glue dot now if you don't have a glue dot these are perfect for adding ribbon and embellishments or anything else like that that doesn't have glue attached um, but you could use just some white glue our Tombow multi-purpose glue just add a little bit let it go very slightly tacky and then pop it on so I think what I'm going to do is that hmm. let's trim these down a little bit more Now I might actually attach those with a tiny bit of glue but I'm, I think that will work as it is. So let's fold that over and that card base is a standard UK card base. So there we go, it worked. I was <laughs> pleased with that in the end, hopefully you can see that. So white card, evening evergreen. Um, base which has been embossed with an embossing folder tasteful textiles and then crumb cake and then this piece has been cut out with ornate layers and I've chopped it down a little bit using by um, adding the layer back on a bit further up heat embossed and then just that sentiment on the right so I hope you like that um, I think I've done enough for today. Goodness me, nearly, nearly an hour. I don't normally do that just for one card, although I did have to redo it, of course, <laughs> having got to this point. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'll just trim that edge off where I miscalculated um, and just reuse that probably on a similar type of card. So thank you so much for joining me. I think I will do my run through this evening at 7 p.m. UK time um, and that is on Wednesday the 5th of January so if you'd like to join me for that then I'd love to see you I'll talk through my favorites thank you Jill and um, tomorrow morning then at 10 I will run through the papers for the paper share so that you can see what those are all about thank you Jeanette for your nice comments so thank you all for joining me those that are still with us um, so thank you Michelle Laura Jill Tracy Scylla um, Jeanette Kerry Catherine Brenda I think has, has popped out Kay I don't know if you're still watching so and anybody else who obviously been watching but hasn't said hi um, apologies because I can't I can't see you so as I say, if you need a catalogue and haven't received one, don't hesitate just to message me um, and I can confirm whether one is on its way. And if not, I will get one on its way to you. Thank you so much for your company today. I hope you have a good day, morning, afternoon or evening, depending on when you're watching. So this replay will be available in Facebook. So you may be watching it um, later rather than live. And it's also on my YouTube channel, so you can always catch me on there as well. And that usually gets uploaded within half an hour of the live. So thank you so much once again. I look forward to crafting with you tomorrow. But I will see you again if you're around this evening for my catalogue walkthrough. 
and uh, see all the new goodies that are coming and find out which my favourites are. Thanks for watching today. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.